Hi everybody, welcome back to another studio vlog. Good morning beautiful people. I did not sleep very well last night, so I'm struggling a bit this morning to get going. I'm also feeling kind of discouraged, to be honest. The last studio vlog took me so long to film and edit and upload. It took way more time than I was expecting to or wanting to, and I feel a little overwhelmed by the process of making studio vlogs or YouTube videos in general. Hopefully, the time it took was just a learning curve process and trying to figure things out and it won't take that long as I go. Um, I hope to develop a workflow and something that allows it to go faster so it may end up looking a little different going forward, maybe less stuff, maybe shorter videos, I don't know, we'll see. This week I've got more Inktobers to do. Inktober painting every day. I have some more work for my client that I'm gonna do, which I'll show you, and uh, I've got some knitting things that I gotta take care of. We'll just keep chugging along and see what happens this week. Thanks for being here. Is he not just the cutest thing you've ever seen in your entire life? Oh. I've got to repot these two aloe plants because they have outgrown their pots and this one keeps tipping over like that. So I'm going to put them into these two pots here. This one's still leaning a bit, but there they are. Okay, y'all, it's time to pick these carrots because they've gotten very big. Look at that. Ooh. All right. I don't want to break it. I want to try to get it out into one whole piece. Here it comes. Wow. Look at it. It's so fat. Mother Earth, it's amazing. Oh, cool. What's up, Doc? <laughs> okay, care number two. This one feels weird. Like lumpy or something. Oh. Uh, he's a joke. He looks big on top. Look at this one. Precious. Well, there's a clear winner. 
It's ugly, but it's still edible. It's still valuable. There they are. Family of carrots. Look at the little babe. Look how pretty this guy is. I'm also feeling a little discouraged by Inktober in general. I guess a big part of my goal for Inktober was to sell a lot of art and also to gain more followers and get a bigger audience to my work. And I've actually lost followers during this process and I have sold nothing. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do about that. Here are all my Inktober paintings so far. There are so many. I think they're turning out pretty well. I haven't put them on Etsy because I want to make sure that I have them all scanned and um, properly documented before I do that, but I have them on Instagram for sale. I don't know, I think they're turning out pretty well. I mean, you've seen them in the videos. And I'm only charging $45 for them, which is so cheap. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not making a ton of money off of them after the, the cost of the materials and then the amount of time that I put into these, I should be charging two or three times as much. So yeah, I'm a little shocked and discouraged of why nobody wants to buy, buy them. <laughs> Maybe they're just not the kind of art that you want to hang up in your house because of their characters, like their character studies. And so if you don't necessarily resonate with one of those characters, you might not want to own it. It's not like a beautiful landscape that makes you feel nice. I don't know. So. I'm not sure if it's just the type of art or the style of art that people don't want to buy, but I don't know. The only other option that I have is to make prints of them and sell them, which is what I did last year. In fact, I've only sold one original watercolor from last year's Inktober as well. So I don't know what, I, I don't know what to do about that. So I could make prints and then sell the prints once Inktober is done, but I'm afraid of printing a lot and then not selling them and spending more money on the prints than I make back because sales have been down and just in general because of the pandemic. I'm nervous to place a large order and not be able to sell them out. So I'm thinking of maybe doing a pre-order of my Inktober illustrations. Once all 31 are done, I can do pre-order and then print just that amount. I think that's maybe what I'm gonna try to do. We'll see. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I have, my sales have gone way down. And so I'm trying to figure out what the best path forward is in terms of prints and my Etsy shop and things that I make and sell and how to make money going forward. It's really overwhelming and I almost didn't want to like get up and even try today because it seems like too much some days to tackle, especially when I don't know how to fix it, you know? I'm gonna just get cracking on some work.
I'm actually really happy with how this one turned out, which is rare for me. <laughs> it's a very cool color palette. It's supposed to be at night, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I really like the colors a lot, actually. She's sleepy. It actually reminds me a lot of one I did last year for last year's Inktober. There's this little pirate guy in a quilt. So two nighttime sleepy quilt people. Super cute. I think somebody should buy both of these and frame them next to each other because I think they go together super well. Okay, so I shouldn't have said this morning that the only reason I'm doing Inktober is for Instagram follows or for sales. That's not the only reason. I also get a lot out of the process. I enjoy working with watercolors and paints. I normally work digitally, so to be able to work with paint and traditional medium is a lot of fun and it's good practice. So it's not a loss. It's beneficial, but I'm also an artist who needs to eat and pay rent, so <laughs> sales also help. Now I just have to photograph these and get them ready for Instagram. So another thing we make over at Fiber Fellows are these knitted hoods. They're pretty sweet. These knitted hood cowl scarves. You can wear them up, you can wear them down, add a hood to any outfit. They're super plush, super cozy, super soft. They come in 13 different colors right now. Yeah, they're super cool. And I need to knit one up, so I'm gonna show you what that process is like. This is where most of the knitting happens. So we have two knitting machines, one here and one here with some yarn and supplies as you can see in this here is uh where a printer is and we package up orders and ship things out here this is a yarn winder we put bats on the wall during <gasps> october so every day of october gets a new bat and here is a photo inspiration on the wall that'll be me one day
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. If you want to see more from me, hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And I hope to see you next time. But until then, stay whimsical and stay magical. Bye.